I'm John Bidwell, inventor of the water cooled spark gap, and in this video, I'll show you what a water cooled spark gap is and how they work. You can also visit WCSGScience.com, the first website in history dedicated to the research and development of water cooled spark gaps. So come on, let's get started. A water-cooled spark gap is comprised of three main parts, the PFR positive, the GFE negative, and a non-conductive insulated water reservoir. With only three components, you can create the most amazing spark gap in history. First, we'll begin where the magic of every WCSG starts, at its electrodes. The most important part of the system, the combination of metals here must both reflect a certain conductivity in water and good heat dissipation in atmosphere. I've discovered the best combination of electrodes for a small-scale WCSG so far is 16-gauge steel wire for the GFE negative and long copper wires for the PFR positive. You can use almost any number of electrode combinations here from just one to eight or more, as more electrodes help facilitate water draw and excess heat dissipation of the system. An effective electrode angle for the PFR positive is 30 degrees from the GFE negative. You do not want to place the electrodes directly above or below each other, as this inhibits water from being drawn up the electrode walls and your electrodes will quickly catch on fire. The protrusion height above the water line is also scalable in relation to the circumference of the electrode itself, the material of the electrode, the voltage applied, and the amount of current needed to facilitate water movement upwards for continued cooling. Capacitors and capacitance play an important overall role in the system, as lower capacitance is required for high amperage energy transfer, whereas higher capacitance applications will function up until a point where current becomes too weak it can no longer draw fresh water up the electrode walls. A more traditional capacitor may be used, such as these super caps, which you can build using my tutorial in the links below. However, what we are looking for is the right balance of capacitance and high amperage. Because those capacitors are not only expensive but sometimes hard to find, I would suggest building a variable salt water capacitor such as this one, where you can simply change the capacitance not only by adding or removing connecting electrodes, but also by changing the water level inside of the cells. For something really futuristic, you can even try making this amazing all-glass capacitor with a removable safety electrode to ground out your caps while you work. Before you can light her up, the system must first be primed by wetting down the GFE negative with water. If the electrode becomes dry or is too far above the water line during operation, it will quickly ignite and melt within mere seconds. Get ready to experiment, because with this last limitation of overheating conquered, we can advance our civilization to the next plateau of high voltage science. The century and a half old dream for tomorrow is finally here. Welcome to the next generation in spark gap history. Welcome. 
to the future.